damn it. Sure? Alright, so do the people really vibing with the last story time? <gasps> they like it. I felt the urge to continue my embarrassing experiences. Hopefully, this will help y'all Matrix dodge the dumbass mistakes I've made in the past. But hey, it's all about trial and error to be real. Right? Mm. Alright, so I'm going to be as blunt as my granddaddy's withered ass belt. Basically, this all started because I needed a job, bro. I was fresh out of college and I needed a new gig, mainly out of fear of the new crippling debt I was going to be dealing with. I heard some horror stories and I was basically preparing myself for the worst. So while I was desperately applying to jobs, I noticed there was a sales position for a mom and pop game store. Now, I know I said GameStop in the title, but I honestly did that for simplicity's sake. Since I feel like a lot of y'all don't see a lot of mom and pop run video game stores around anymore, and some of you probably never even heard of them. So yeah. Bro, basically it was like a family run GameStop, okay? So we're gonna call this shop Happy Gaming, and honestly, that's because one of my coworkers who is always super bubbly and gung-ho would always say that after she rings a customer out. Happy gaming! Like, bro, I kid you not. So I apply, and almost two hours later I get a response, and after a brief back and forth, I get a call for an interview the next day. I was ecstatic, bro. I was like, yo, this actually happens? That fast? But honestly, I didn't even care. All I could happily think about is the fact that I got an interview to work at a video game store. Copy that. Now, for the day of the interview, it was actually really funny if I'm being honest, and mad quick. There was a bald older dude who happened to be the store owner, and a girl with a nose ring and a clipboard. Okay, what I mean quick, it was hella fast. Basically, this is what it was. Mm, you do drugs? No. Any trouble with the law? No. Are you a dessert lover? Uh, um, come on, damn it. Uh, sure? You got the job! Basically, I got the job that day. And next thing you know, I was a part of the working crew. There was this one quirky girl who I mentioned earlier named Emmy, and this other dude named Fitz who I still talk to to this day. And yeah, he wanted to be drawn as a bear. I don't know why, I just went with it. And honestly bro, a lot of the people that we got as customers were so wild. From crazy walk-ins to creepers who would never want to leave. Personally, one of my favorites was a dude who'd always wear a waifu t-shirt and walk into the store and try and make the female figures kiss. I'm not even lying, he just seemed really lonely, so I just let it pass. Dude, touch grass. I'm tired of touching grass, I wanna get lit! You had stressed out dads who only saw their kids on weekends. Oh <laughs> well dad, they have so many cool games here. I thought I told you to climb up! Damn! And bury your head in the ground, you can't be looking at games. Deeper? DEEPER! Ah, <sighs> it was truly a paradise. I'm kidding. Not really. But honestly, the scariest person to work with would have had to been my manager. And for the sake of this story, we're just gonna call her Beanika. This chick was straight up ruthless. She would take no L's from anybody, customer or employee. Like one time Fitz forgot to clock out for lunch and when he came back, she literally had this man's stuff out on a clearance rack. It was wild and he legit had to buy back his own shit by going above and beyond and being an amazing employee. But that was nothing compared to how she treated this one customer. And it was a kid and his mom, I'll never forget it. So this one kid wanted to pick up a pre-order with his mom and it was a rated M for mature title. Hi, how can I help you? Hi, we're here to pick up a game. Sure, which one did you have in mind? Uh, what was it called again? Oh, that's right. Bikini Barbarian Extreme? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. One sec. Hey. Oh, Beanica. What's up? Say, Lenny, did you tell them about the rating of this game? Oh, I was actually just about to... It's okay. I'll take it from here. Sure. Okay, so ma'am... Were you aware that this game is rated M for mature audiences? Yeah, he mentioned that was just because of the violence in some minor scenes. <laughs> oh yeah, minor scenes. Those can be awful. Not to mention the intense amount of blood and gore throughout the entire game. What? Yeah, I'm talking blood and gore everywhere. In fact, it's so bad that this game almost got an AO rating. That's adults only. Wait, what? Not to mention, ma'am, this is Bikini Barbarian, so there's a crap ton of nudity, titties bouncing everywhere, even some casual sex minigames. <gasps> but hey, I'm sure that a real slugger like yourself probably wants the Bikini Barbarian X Limited Edition. It comes with the very own Bikini Barbarian collectible figure. So, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, you little pervert. Enjoy your damn sex murder simulator. So, ma'am, will that be cash or card? Cash or card? Ma'am, cash her card. After the mom's disgust, she just proceeded to burn down the entire store. The insurance department never found the bodies. And the- <laughs> Now I'm kidding, bro. Here's what really happened. The game was actually Fable 3.
Okay, so this game has blood and gore, intense violence, mature language, strong sexual content, nudity, use of illegal drugs and narcotics, mature humor, oh, and titties. Needless to say, he didn't get the game that day. But while I was apologizing for my fumble, Binika then comes up to me. She then grabs my face and is like, jeez dude, anytime a little shit like that tries to pull a fast one over you, let me know, I got you. Okay? Now, dude, I don't know what's wrong with me, but when she said that to me like that, I don't know why, it made me oddly like her more. Like, there's gotta be something wrong with me, and like, dude, the way she said it was so controlling, but at the same time, I'm just like, I don't know, I kinda, like, respect this chick now, even though I didn't before. It, I, I don't know, I'm weird. But, if I'm being honest, this is the story of how I secretly dated my GameStop manager. Remember when I said I was a war hero? I lied. Bro, I HATE CLOSING SHIFTS! For real, you have to be a special kind of disturbed to be like, Oh yeah, I don't mind closing up. STOP THE CAP, YES YOU DO! Bruh. I THINK it'll get easier with time. HA! NO! I mean, if it's not one thing, it's definitely gonna be another from inventory, to till county, to taking out the garbage, to making sure to set the alarm. Basically, there was a crap ton of things that had to be taken care of before you could even THINK of stepping out that front door. And guess who was always getting stuck with closing shifts? Even when I said I preferred mornings or afternoons. Was it the bear? Don't you disrespect me like that again, you know well it was fully me, what the hell's wrong with you? That's right, me. So, my boss would come in and be like, Howdy gang, who wants to tackle the end of the day shift? And bro, I would always be like, Please don't call me, please don't call me, please don't call me, bro, please don't call me, please don't- Lenny, I'm looking at you, my boy! Fuck! Uh, actually, I was- I'll do it. Great! That's a big help! And at this point, I was literally thinking to myself, Thank God, Beanie Cuss said she's going to- As long as Lenny's able to close up with me. Sounds good to me, I already wrote his name down anyway. What? what?! And she had the nerve to tell me, what's with that look? Were you really expecting me to do this by myself? We're supposed to be a two-man team, remember? <laughs> Bro, ain't this about him? And just like that, I was stuck on clothing shifts for the long haul. With Beanie Cup. For four months! <laughs> and yeah, it sucked. But chilling with Binica after hours was honestly fun. I mean, sometimes we just grab beers, kick back, and just vibe about stuff. Only one thing honestly made the experience trash. You don't know me! Bruh. My ass! My rules! The fact that we had a local hobo who was always just kind of bumming around the plaza. You see, in my plaza, we had a huge liquor store. It's probably one of the larger buildings in the area. And typically, from time to time, you'd see some sketchy folks just hanging outside of it. And the number one infamous reoccurring character, let's just call him... Sticky. Seriously, nobody knew this guy's name and he stunk to high heaven. In fact, uh, mm, should I tell this part of the story? It's kind of... You know what? Screw it. I was legit traumatized by this, so y'all have to be too. See, one day, there was a lady who kept making multiple trips to the liquor store. And Sticky was just kind of chilling outside of there as per usual. So, according to this lady, when he first saw her, That case of beer looks heavy. And later on the second time he saw her, It's a nice day for a cold one, ain't it? And by the third, according to her, he just kept getting more aggressive till... <laughs> GIVE ME A BEER! Bro, she literally ran from the liquor store right into our shop. Beanico quickly told her, uh, sorry ma'am, we're gonna be clothing soon. Hey, I don't mean to bother you, but there's this crazy guy outside. Me and Beanica looked at each other, and we're just like, what man? Because clearly, no one was out there. What do you mean? He was just right there! Sticky pops out of nowhere, slamming his face on the glass, and he's just like, Give me what you owe me, I'm a war hero! Beanico quickly locks the door, and then she turns to me and says, Len, call the cops! R right and just before I could dial, all you hear is the sound of clothes coming off. I look over, and to my horror, my absolute horror, bro, I see Sticky's wrinkly bare cheeks on the damn glass. This is how I knew I was basically in a hostage situation. What are you doing? Stop laughing your ass off and call the police! Len, hurry! Remember when I said I was a war hero? I lied. What followed after that, the owner himself had to come by and clean up. It was a pretty crappy situation, if you know. So, fast forward a few months, and we haven't seen eye nor tail of Sticky. And honestly, that was for the best. The plaza was way better off without him. So, Sticky actually ended up getting arrested, and apparently had a restraining order placed against him by several different business owners in that plaza. My boss filed a police report as well. It was a whole type of pain in the ass kind of thing. 
she asked if I was okay, and I said, yeah. She said, that's good. I'm glad that you are. She then asked me if I want to go back to her place for a bit. And bro, do you know what I said? Uh, okay. Yo, just come back tomorrow, for real. And this guy explodes, and then he punches a hole through the glass. <laughs> You know, as someone who's worked in retail, more specifically a video game retail store, you'd think it'd actually be super fun. HA! No! That was literally one of the most stressful jobs I've had in my life. Next to dealing with Karens, angry dads who clearly didn't want to be there, and a bunch of 12 year olds who would always leave the game kiosk disgusting and super sticky. Nothing was worse than last minute shoppers. Okay, now hear me out. We would often get people trying to come in around 10, 5, even 3 minutes before we were about to close the store. Now, not all were bad. Some dudes would actually come in and are like, Listen man, I know you're about to close, but I just need to buy this copy of 2K. And this sexy Zelda poster. Say no more fam. I got you. Oh, thanks man. <laughs> Real though, shout out to y'all because you already know what you wanted the minute you came in. And you still managed to dip out of there before closing time. But this story, I'm not gonna lie, it takes the cake. So, one time, Binica, Emergen, and myself, we were getting ready to close up for the day. The doors were locked, the registers were closed, Binica was in the back already counting the money, so me and Emergen were just in the front cleaning up. You know, after a shitstorm of kids from hockey practice come in with their parents right before we're closing. Bro, I swear to you, it looked like a wrecking ball went through there. So, me and Emergen are cleaning as fast as we can because basically it's been a really long shift and we're just trying to get out of here. When suddenly, we hear a loud thud at the door. Not even gonna lie, it scared the crap out of both of us. There was just this dude banging on the door and Emergen's like, what should we do? There's a guy here. So I turn to her and I'm like, just tell him we're closed. So she's like, um, s sorry sir, we're closed for the night. Duh, what? Come on, I just need a new controller. I'll be less than 30 seconds. Uh... <sighs> So I go over there, I'm like, yo bro, we already locked down the till and all the registers are already closed. Seriously? Yeah, you're gonna have to come back tomorrow if anything. Duh, this is ridiculous. Brother, I promise you, I only need a new controller and I'll be out of there. I get that, but we close at 9 and it's literally 9.07. You don't understand, I need it, it's how I de-stress. So out of nowhere, this guy literally starts getting aggravated. Like, bro, it's past 9 o'clock and we just want to go home. This is one of the craziest retail experiences I've ever had in my life, my guy. And you want to know what's even crazier about it? He grabs the door handle, like I kid you not. It was literally one of the most bizarre situations I've ever been in. So at this point, I'm 100% done with this dude. I'm just like, yo, just come back tomorrow, for real. And this guy explodes! And then he punches a hole through the glass, literally scraping at us like a zombie from The Walking Dead. Emergen is screaming her head off, and the guy just looks at us and says, You caused this. I'm kidding, like, none of that last part ever happened. He did push the door, mind you, and then just stormed off in anger. So I'm just standing there with the most puzzled look on my face, thinking, what the hell just happened? And Beanica comes from the back, she's like, what's all the yelling about? And then you have Emerjin over there looking terrified like she just witnessed a murder. Like, girl, we get one of those every other Tuesday, like, calm down. Like, literally, I had to escort this girl to her car for the next week and a half. <laughs> No problem, ma'am. I'd be happy to take a look at that for you. And as I slowly open the box... You wanna know what's absolutely crazy? The insane amount of returns we used to get from customers trying to sell back their consoles and games. Not even insane because of the amount of volume we had, no, I'm talking insane from the sheer type of unholy returns we used to get. Bro, what I'm telling you, your skin hasn't crawled until you've seen what Frosting, Jolly Ranchers, and Cheetos can do to a PlayStation 4 controller. Some of them were so gross that we honestly have to say, no, we can't take them, but we'd be happy to dispose of it for you. Or, we'd be happy to dispose of that bastard child you have that thought it was okay to stick a Wiimote in a fireplace. I'm not even joking, that really did happen. And after working there for almost three and a half years, I've pretty much seen it all. A PS2 with a broken disc tray. A GameCube with a broken disc tray. A PS3 with a chunk of it fucking missing. A Wii covered in oatmeal. Wiimote's covered in oatmeal. You get where I'm going with it. It, it was me. I just really like playing GoldenEye and eating oatmeal. But honestly, that's nothing. Let me tell you about the worst console return I've ever encountered. So this was during the time of November, which was just before Black Friday, which honestly, I also have crazy horror stories to share about. 
But back to this bizarre tale. So one day, me and my homie Jacob were just manning the shop, and it's a pretty slow Thursday afternoon. We probably had just like one guy playing in the game kiosk, and a couple of window shoppers, and the occasional annoying kid. So like I said, a pretty slow day. Then suddenly a woman comes in who I can only describe as a mom with a coke bottle like figure. Bro, she was low-key built like Dexter's mom and I don't know why. She just came in slowly, made her way to the counter and actively take trade-ins for cash. And I told her yeah. She then reaches into her purse and takes a massive brown box that was sticking out of her bag and places it on the counter. So she's like, yeah my son finally moved out of the house so we have some of his stuff and I'm sure he no longer wants so I'm selling it on his behalf. Bro no longer want or no longer gonna have when you sell it without him knowing trust me this isn't the first time a parent has come into the store with their kids console or games and sold it for extra cash so she asks as if it'd be possible to sell it as is seeing as a the original box was missing b the wires were missing and c she had no idea what type of quality it was in so me being in my position i had no choice but to assess the quality and see what condition it was in so i tell her no problem ma'am i'd be happy to take a look at that for you and as I slowly open up the box, she warns me that it may have a bit of an odor. And BAM! It was the most putrid stench I've ever smelled. I honestly felt like I was going to gag. My partner Jacob was like, Dom, what the fuck? And he got the hell out of there. You got this, Len. Bro, it was disgusting. There's what could only be described as expired milk on the bottom of the box. Red and brown stains on it, like someone either threw up on it or some shit and tried to fix it but couldn't quite get the job done right. And the white color of the Xbox One S was turning brown, as if it was beyond repair. And to add insult to injury, the one flipping controller in that bitch was mashed up to hell. Like this woman's got me fucked up bro, I can't even lie, like nobody is taking this Xbox. The Lord himself wouldn't want this Xbox. So I was trying to seal back this box, knowing the ungodly odor has already wafted into the store, and it was gonna take what? Hella fans, seven Dragon Balls, the Chaos Emeralds, and a Women of Prayer to ever get the store to smell half decent again. <laughs> Thankfully, I got to close that shit up, gross smell and all. Um, excuse me young man, you didn't answer my question. How much exactly can I get for this? Get the fuck! Yeah, bro, she didn't get any cash for that shit. Okay, so back when I was working at GameStop, one thing I'd hear a lot, do you have this on discount? 100% of the time is from parents, to be honest with you. Like, dealing with customers who always try to demand some sort of discount, or try to get a game or something without paying tax. And I'm even talking like games that dropped like literally two days ago, fresh off the bakery. Yeah, they'd come into our store, asking if they can get it on clearance. Like one time I got this guy who went to our shop, and he went straight to the new releases, came back to me, and he's like, Hey man, is there any way I can get this discounted? Uh, no, it's a new release, so it's currently being charged at full price. What? Why? Because it's a new release. <sighs> Ridiculous. Like, bro, what do you want me to do? I literally just work here and I just can't magically reduce the price of a new Zelda game that came out two days ago. And honestly, I'm starting to think the more I tried to explain it, the more they didn't want to hear it. Like, one time I also had a customer walked into our store and just started browsing through the shelves, just kind of generally looking around. After a few minutes, he approached me at the counter with a game in hand, that being Doom Eternal for the PS5, and immediately demanded a discount. He was like, dead ass. Come on, I know you can go lower. It's been out for more than a year now. I took a deep breath because I already knew he was going to be one of those, bro. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but that's the price. It's already been discounted, and I can't offer any further discounts on an already discounted game. What about that employee discount? Can't you just, like, you know, like, uh, lo loan me yours for a bit? Bro, I kid you not. He actually asked me to use an employee discount to further discount an already discounted game. Discount. So at this point, I'm 110% done with this customer. I'm just like, no. And now tell me why this dude starts getting heated at me for And to mess to speak to my manager. <laughs> if only he knew the dark chaos that's walking into his life. And I'm just like, alright. And before you can even say nightmare, she was there. Hi there! Um, I, uh, 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 about this game, I was, I, uh, 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 Yeah, after that we had no more problems. At that point, I couldn't even deal with it anymore, so I'm just like, okay, what do you want from me? Beg me. Oh, great heavens! Okay, so we're gonna just dive right in on this one. So you already know my GameStop manager, Bidika. The loud, mean, take no crap from any one manager who secretly had a heart of gold. Yeah, she had a lot going on. Anyway, around this time, she always asked me to work the same shift as her. Even if it was supposed to be my day off. Like, bro, why? 
like the last thing I want to have to do was come to that damn GameStop when it's supposed to be my day off. Just to have to cover someone else's ship because they gave her an ick vibe. Girl, I'm about to ick you upside your damn head. Apparently out of the other five employees, I was the one who annoyed her the least. Which is cool and all for her, but sometimes I just want to enjoy a day off. Like, bro, I was literally yearning for freedom. Like, I want to be able to go outside and actually say hi to living people. <laughs> So one day I'm chilling on my lunch break and I get a message from my boy who says there's actually going to be a Stranger Things theme party going on downtown. This is back when the show was still popping, popping. I said what I said. And is company giving free, free, three, three, fuck. And is company giving three free tickets. Bro, I don't care. I'm leaving that in. And I was 100% down to go. Only thing was my manager once again scheduled me to be with her on that Friday night. And I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. I did not want to go to that shift at all. Like, I already covered for five people that month alone, so I was already going to say no from the jump. So it's winding down towards the end of the day, and that meant it was time for the moment of truth. Binika and old man Jameson, the owner of the store, were going over the schedule. And tell me why I see Binika looking over that schedule over and over like she triple checked that thing. Yeah, girl, that's right. Look all you want. I already knew I had nothing to worry about. Why? Because I already went over her head and went straight to Jameson. Showed him proof of how I was coming for people and demanded that I got a day off, which was game set. BAM! In your face, I win, heart of the cards, L plus Rachel, L plus U fell off, plus Junior Crispy Chicken W. My strategy had no flaws. I could smell the kids from Stranger Things now. I mean, <sighs> bro, you know what I mean, I was able to skip work. But, while I was still in the midst of my victory posing, Lynn! Sorry to interrupt your awkward anime protagonist posing, but, Binika came up with a marvelous idea. I'm not even lying, that's how he sounded, and the voice makes me happy, so I'm keeping it like that. This lovely lady says she'll take all the scheduling dilemmas off my hands and do it for me. Wh what? And since you two are such a dream team, I already know you'll be there to help her every step of the way. What? Mm, cool effect. Well, I'm off to go smell mayonnaise now. Till tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> b, -b, 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 b my plan. My strategy. We're kind of sick, twisted. It takes a special kind of person to be this damn evil. She knew I had plans, yet she still tried to schedule me to work. So I said, no, nah, we're settling this right now. So I marched my way up to her, and I'm like, yo, beans, don't call me that. You already knew I had that Friday off. What's going on? Easy. I saw that Fitz was supposed to be scheduled, and I didn't want to work with him. She said that shit as naturally as she breathed. I'm not even lying to you. But, the, but, but you already knew I had plans. Yeah, and? What are you saying, Len? You don't want to work on the same shift as me? Yes! I want to go out and actually live! It's not even a full day shift. What are you getting so bent out about? Seriously? I covered more shifts than anyone. I swear I see you than I see my own ass. <laughs> At that point, I couldn't even deal with it anymore. So I just said, okay, what do you want from me? Beg me. Oh, oh, there is oh. no way in the hell I'm begging Binika to get a day off that's rightfully mine. At this point, I said, fuck it. I'll get a job at the damn Quiznos next door rather than put up with this. Listen to me, woman. I'm taking that damn day off and if i feel like it i'm taking the next day off as well and you know why because i earned it through blood sweat and torment and when you earn something you're damn entitled to have it okay so like 80 percent of that i didn't do but i did get mad and say that i'm not coming on friday like get the actual person who's scheduled to show up and i know you would have done the same damn thing don't even cap and finally after all my scheming planning heartbreak and demanding door, looks around, and makes a beeline to the front desk, and I just held my ground as the battle went underway. <laughs> you ever be having a chill day at work and then all of a sudden you feel a disturbance in the force? Yeah, that would happen all the time, particularly when it came to dealing with Karens. And this story happens to be about a Karen that was completely out of control. Oh, and by the way, let me know what you guys think of these bite-sized stories. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. They're a lot more manageable for me to get out. Anywho, this whole thing started with Fritz and Emerton were just chilling outside while on break. When suddenly, they felt it. And it's this thing that all retail employees kind of have a sixth sense about. Like, bro, you can just low-key tell when a customer is gonna give you trouble. And oh no, this is no regular customer. This was a level 3 Karen. Oh dear lord. <sighs> Come along, Matthew. Oh shit, what do we do? I'll go warn them. You try to slow her down. Uh, hi ma'am. How can I, uh, help- Move it! Len! Look out! A Karen's coming! Hurry, get Beanica, she's our only hope! <gasps> it's okay. I can handle her. No, dude, this is a level 3 Karen. Live, laugh, love, and all! Look, 
Level 3? Bro, for those of you who don't know, level 1 is just annoying, who will just complain, put up a fight, and then let it go. Level 2 will be like, let me speak to your manager. You know, kind of just annoy you, but at the end of the day, they're going to walk away. Level 3 is a whole different beast. And here's exactly what happened. So she comes into the store, looks around, and makes a beeline to the front desk. And I just held my ground as the battle went underway. Excuse me, young man. I need to speak to your manager. Now! Sure thing, man, but um, what seems to be the problem? This is absolutely ridiculous. And she takes out a game case from out of her purse and slams it onto the counter. I bought this game for my son the other day, and it's completely defective. It doesn't even work. I was legit trying to be the best employee I could possibly be. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. I opened up the case and started examining the disc all around. No one would do that but me. You people better fix this. My son was so upset that he couldn't play the game that I bought him with my hard-earned money. You wanna know something funny about this game? After looking it over, I noticed that it had some crazy scratches on the back of the disc. Bro, like it looked like a honey badger went to town on this thing. And now I know damn sure we did not sell it to her like that. But how do you explain that to an angry Karen who's practically foaming at the mouth? Oh, and for those wondering, the game was actually Uncharted 3. So I tried to tell her in the calmest way humanly possible. Um, ma'am, it seems that there are a series of scratches and blemishes on the back of the disc. Yeah, bro, she flipped out. What? This is beyond unacceptable. I demand to speak to your manager. And she showed that shit loud as hell. And honestly, at this point, I was 100% done with this customer. I just had to leave it to Beanica. Um, be Beanie, it's okay, Lenny. I heard the whole thing. Bro, Beanica is a force to be reckoned with. If you don't believe me, check out the past videos. I'm not even joking. It was about to go down. Hello, ma'am. How can I help you? This Karen immediately blew up at Beanica, basically exaggerating how damaged and defective the game actually is. And bro, when I tell you she was screaming so loud, the entire store could hear. The amount of patience Beanica has is beyond me at times. Shout out to her, for real. And after that gale storm of complaining, all Beanica calmly said was, I understand that, ma'am, but unfortunately, we can't exchange a damaged product for you. It's store policy. I'm sure you understand. Never before in my life had I wish I had a pair of earplugs. I'm not even lying. Bro, this Karen flipped out even harder. She was ranting so loud that everyone could hear it. I was literally dumbfounded, but Beanica was as calm as a river. And again, all she said was, ma'am, I'm sorry, but it's store policy, and I'm going to have to ask you to relax. And you could tell this Karen was getting ready to blow up one more time. Then suddenly, mom! Can we just get the game disrepaired? It's no big deal. What? You're totally embarrassing me. She only oh. then stopped to realize how bad of a scene she was causing. So thank the star, she then finally says, I'm leaving, and she's going to get the disc repaired elsewhere, and she'd never shop here again. And I'm not even going to lie, bro. This legit happened. Before they leave, I'm sorry. I had no idea my mom was going to freak out like that. I was actually the one who screwed up the disc, but I didn't say it. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks for telling the truth, though. Next time, be sure to tell your mom right off the bat. You can actually get the game fixed a lot faster that way. Oh, uh, okay. What, what the? Seriously? How come she's never that calm with me? Oh, and by the way, Timmy basically became Beanica's number one fan. Little pervert.